Welcome to the Battle of the Branches, where we're going to look at how different parts of our government can both limit or check each other and balance each other out with power so that we don't have one part of the government becoming too powerful. So what is checks and balances? Basic definition, it is one of the main principles of the U.S. Constitution. So it, this is why we're learning it, is so you can build on these very basic principles and then understand the rest of, the, of what we're going to learn throughout the year. Or if you're reviewing this for the end of course exam, state test, it's a good little refresher video. Why do we have checks and balances? Remember way back when uh, we learned about the, the revolution and we were fighting against a system of government where there was a king uh, or queen who just had too much power. And so the idea was if we split things up in the government into different branches and then allow those branches of government to limit each other, we can prevent the government from gaining too much power. They didn't want the president, that one person, to just have too much power in their office. So how does it work? We're gonna use this triangle to kind of show you different examples of how the three branches of government can limit each other. So we've got the legislative branch at the top here, we've got the executive branch, and then we have the judicial branch. At the national level, that would be Congress for legislative, the president and all the executive departments for the executive branch and at the judicial level we would have the u.s supreme court and then the federal courts below that so what are some ways that they can limit each other let's say congress passes a bill that they want to be law the president can veto that bill and basically that bill will not become law because that that's a check that the president has or let's say the president wants to change up who is in the federal court system well the president gets to nominate federal judges they can also grant pardons if they don't like how a court decision was made they can say that person who was guilty is now pardoned so those are ways that the president has ability to kind of limit or mess with the other two branches there are counter examples to all of these though so congress has some powers over the president and, and quite a few checks really because again they wanted the elected legislative branch to have a little bit more power over that single executive official. So Congress can launch investigations to see what the executive branch is doing. They can override those presidential vetoes and actually put a bill into law if they have a ton of votes to do that. And the Senate gets to approve or deny those nominations that I just mentioned, where the president gets to nominate judges. The Senate gets to look over that and, and kind of give it a yay or nay type situation. Congress also can impeach judges. So federal judges serve for life, but Congress does have the ability to remove them if there are enough votes to do so. And again, like we said, Senate has the final say on those judges and, and Supreme Court justices. So they get to kind of, you know, have a say in, in who makes up the judicial branch. And then finally, we're looking at the judicial uh, checks. They can say, you know, this law that Congress passed and that the president signed into law, um, let's say it gets out into the into the real world and people take it to court to challenge it, saying this is not constitutional. The court can say that law does not line up with our interpretation of the Constitution and then strike that law down, basically declaring that law to be no, no longer valid. They can also declare executive actions to be unconstitutional. So the court system could look at a new regulation passed by uh, the president's administration and say, nope, you know what, that oversteps the bounds. And so that, that regulation no longer applies legally. So those are some powers that, that the courts have over the other two branches. So hopefully these examples have kind of, you know, helped to illustrate how this system works. What are some advantages to checks and balances? It keeps each branch of government in check slows down government action, which was a goal of the founding fathers. They didn't want government to move too quickly and, and gain too much power. And it makes it hard to pass controversial or unpopular laws. Some disadvantages. I just said it slows down government as an advantage, but that's also if we're during a crisis and government does need to act quickly, there are a lot of these checks put into our system that slow things down and can make it hard for government to react and then it can make it hard to pass popular legislation. So there are things that 80% of the population might agree with, but if there's a certain makeup of like different political parties 
controlling different parts and different branches that can slow things down and make it hard for those things to get past. So hopefully this has helped. A quick overview. Obviously there's more in your lesson pages and definitely call your government teacher if you have any questions about any of this.